In this lesson, we'll overview the concept of the Cramerau lower bound for the mean square error for the estimation of a deterministic but unknown parameter. And we'll show how to compute and interpret this bound for a few simple examples. Well, for maximum likelihood estimation, we use the logarithm of the measurement density for a continuous observation or the logarithm of the probability mass function for a discrete observation to define the log likelihood function for the unknown parameter. The derivative of the log likelihood, then, was an important quantity that we often use to derive the maximum likelihood estimator. Now we're going to also look at the second derivative of the log likelihood, and we're going to examine the statistics of these functions when the data are the random variables that define the observation. Specifically, we'll look at the second moment of the first derivative, and we'll look at the first moment of the second derivative. Now with some fairly straightforward analysis, we can show that the second moment of the first derivative is equal to the negative of the first moment for the second derivative of the log likelihood. Of course, this relationship is subject to the condition that these derivatives and their moments exist. And when they do, these expectations are called the Fisher information, and they're very important in our study of estimation theory. In fact, by making use of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, we could show that the mean square error for any unbiased estimator of the unknown parameter must be greater than or equal to the reciprocal of the Fisher information. Again, it's important to keep in mind that this bound only applies to unbiased estimators. If we know the functional form for the bias as a function of the true parameter value, then we could modify this bound to account for that bias. But for our initial study, we'll restrict our use of the kramer lower bound as a bound for the mean square error for unbiased estimators. Now as an example, suppose that the observation is an exponential random variable with an unknown parameter that's equal to its mean or expected value. The log likelihood, then, is the negative of the log of alpha minus the observation divided by alpha. The first derivative is negative 1 over alpha plus the observation divided by alpha squared. And the second derivative is 1 over alpha squared minus 2 times the observation divided by alpha to the third. Now, if we treat the observation as a random variable, we can take the expected value, which only depends on the first moment of the observation. And that moment's equal to the parameter alpha, so that the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood is equal to negative 1 over alpha squared. Therefore, the Fisher information is 1 over alpha squared and the cromer lower bound is alpha squared. Now from our study of maximum likelihood estimation, you might recall that the maximum likelihood estimator for alpha in this model would simply be the observed value x. So that the mean square error for the maximum likelihood estimator is equal to alpha squared, which implies that the maximum likelihood estimator attains the cromer lower bound. Now you might recall that if we have k independent observations of x, then the maximum likelihood estimator for the mean parameter in this situation would be the sample mean for the data, and the mean square error would be alpha squared divided by the number of observations. Now this is consistent with another property of the kramer lower bound. That is, if we process several independent observations of data, then the kramer lower bound for those observations is equal to the kramer lower bound for one observation divided by the number of independent observations. Now as another example, suppose the observed data is a Gaussian random variable with zero mean and an unknown standard deviation sigma. The log likelihood then is negative log sigma minus the observation squared over two sigma squared plus some other terms that don't depend on the unknown parameter sigma. Well, the first derivative is negative 1 over sigma plus the observation squared over sigma to the third. The second derivative is 1 over sigma squared minus 3 times the observation squared over sigma to the fourth. And if we evaluate this now as a function of the random data, 
We could take the expected value, which only depends on the second moment for the observation in this situation. That second moment is sigma squared. So that'll give us a result of negative 2 over sigma squared. And then the Fisher information is 2 over sigma squared, and the Cramerau lower bound is sigma squared over 2. Well, here's an unbiased estimator for sigma. It's the absolute value of the observation multiplied by the square root of pi over 2, which, based on the observation model, has a mean square error that would be equal to pi minus 2 over 2 times sigma squared, which, was, which is roughly 0.57 sigma squared, which is greater than the Cramerau lower bound. Let's suppose, though, that we replace the leading scale factor with a variable a, and we examine the mean square error we get for different values for a. Now the only value for a that makes this estimator unbiased is the one we had earlier, the square root of pi over 2. So all other values correspond to biased estimators. Well here is a plot of the mean square error normalized by sigma squared as a function of the scale factor a. Now the dotted red line shows the Cromerau lower bound, and we can see that there is a region for which this estimator will have a mean square error that is below the bound. Now the unbiased estimator was when we chose a to be the square root of pi over 2, and you can see, we can see that that is, in fact, a little above the bound. And if we want the best mean square error, we would choose the leading scale factor as the square root of 2 over pi. Now this example illustrates the importance of understanding that the standard Cromerau lower bound only applies to unbiased estimators, and in some situations, introducing bias to an estimator can lower its mean square error below the bound. Well, as a final example, suppose that the observation is a binomial random variable with m trials and an unknown success probability equal to p. So we'll assume that we know the number of trials, but we're trying to estimate the success probability. The log likelihood, then, is x, observation, the observed number of successes, times the logarithm of p, plus m minus x, times the logarithm of 1 minus p, plus all of the other terms that don't depend on the unknown parameter p. The derivative, then, is x over p minus m minus x over 1 minus p. The number of observed successes over the success probability minus the number of trials minus the number of observed successes over 1 minus the success probability. Second derivative is negative x over p squared minus m minus x over 1 minus p squared. Then if we evaluate the second derivative as a function of the random observation and we take its expected value, that'll be a function only of the first moment of the observation and the expected value of the number of successes for a binomial random variable with m trials and a success probability of p is the number of trials times the success probability. And that gives us a result that the second moment, or the excuse me, the first moment of the second derivative of the log likelihood is negative m number of trials divided by p times 1 minus p. That means that the Cromerau lower bound is p times 1 minus p over the number of trials. Now, for this problem, the maximum likelihood estimator for the success probability is equal to the observed number of successes divided by the number of trials. And if we look at the mean square error for that situation, we would get the, the variance for, this is an unbiased estimator, so we would get the variance for the number of successes which is the number of trials times success probability times 1 minus success probability. Then when the scale factor m, we would square that in the denominator and we'd see that the mean square error attains the Cromerau lower bound. Well, in summary, the Cromerau lower bound is an important tool for deriving lower bounds for the mean square estimation error for unbiased estimators of an unknown parameter.